Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to another History of Video. Now with Halloween going on today, I thought it'd be a great way of featuring a horror themed character on this channel. And I know many of you have been requesting for me to approach this series at some point in time. I'm not going to pretend like I know everything about this series, because I really, really don't. But you guys have requested for it, and Hisako is one of my favourite character designs within the Killer Instinct series. So yes, today's video will be a History of Video and none other than Hisako. Now Hisako within the Killer Instinct series wasn't always this malevolent spirit. The true reason as to why she's in this form lies within her past, as it does tie into her motivations and actions. Now Hisako is from a very prestigious bloodline, as her ancestors were infamous samurais that did make quite a name for themselves in their time. So after she was born, she naturally had some high expectations she had to reach. Now some people may not be aware of this, but Hisako wasn't exactly born with the name Hisako. Her birth name is in fact Chiharu, as her mother and father gave her that name because of the season she was born in, as the peach trees around her area flourished with beautiful opportunities. Now despite her lineage, she didn't grow up in a rich household, as her father was a ronin and his time had long passed, and since then he had retired and raised a family of his own, becoming a farmer in the meantime to help fund his family. Now when Chiharu learned about her family's legacy, she believed it was her birthright to follow in their footsteps, and thus her father would teach her in the ways of the blade. Now although she was extremely skilled in using a sword, it wasn't really a weapon she enjoyed using. As you see, she felt much more comfortable with using a naginata. Now over the next few years, she would train every single day alongside her father, even mimicking and implementing many of the moves she had learned using a naginata into just doing simple daily chores. So she was becoming a very strong and formidable fighter, which is actually lucky. Because of the area she was born around in Japan, there were many warring clans and bandits that would ransack villages and burn them to the ground. So her father was extremely proud of the very strong woman she was being moulded into, even giving her a very special weapon that was used by ninjas that was known as the Nikotai. It was a very small golden blade that would fit over one finger, and it was laced with such a strong poison that if she were to use it on anyone, they would die from a single scratch. Now one day, whilst the village was just going through their daily routine, the village would be approached by a group of showmen and wished to perform a puppet show for those there. As you see, the puppet show that was put on was called the Story of the ghost wife. It was a tale of a woman who had passed away and had returned back to her lover to hopefully reunite with them. However, her husband had remarried and thus because of the vengeance and betrayal she felt in her heart, she would murder her husband's new bride by tearing her head off. Now, though it may be seen as somewhat subtle by today's standards, this puppet show terrified Shiharu. Not so much by just the story, but the appearance of the ghost wife. This would cause many nightmares for the very young Shiharu. Now, when she was 19, the village would be approached by a very young and very arrogant aristocrat, travelling through the lands and even mocking her by throwing prayer beads at her and asking if she wanted to marry him. And this is where the young woman looked him straight in the face and started to laugh at him. You see, she had no interest in becoming a wife. She had accepted her family's legacy and had already considered herself to be a samurai. She wasn't looking for some kind of arrogant fool like him to settle down with. Disgusted by her outburst, the young man would jump off his horse and attempt to attack her. But this plan quickly backfired as she disarmed him and beat him into the ground. After the well-deserved beating, he would climb back on his horse and ride away, licking his wounds. Now, Chiharu felt fantastic after doing this, but little did she know she had started a sequence of events that would lead to a very devastating future for her. Now, a week later, Asako would dive deep into a forest and begin training once more. Now, for some reason, she decided to attempt to train in her kimono, and by doing so, actually ended up damaging the clothing. But before she could actually worry, about this, she noticed that the air was starting to become thick, soon realising that it was in fact smoke. And when she turned around, she saw a fire roaring from her village. When she ran back, she realised that it had been raided. Her mother, her grandmother and her two siblings along with her father had all been slain. Now why exactly did this happen? Well you see the young arrogant man that had passed through the village was in fact the son of a very powerful shogun. After the humiliation his son had suffered, he decided that he would rob them of their homes and lives. Now when Chiharu found her family, their bodies were piled on each other as if they were butchered animals. And after discovering her father's head, she ran over to his body and picked up his naginata. Turning her eyes and sights on the shogun's forces, she laid waste to those that had attacked her village, killing many without any mercy. But throughout the brutal battle, she was suffering from very severe wounds, and they eventually started to get to her, eventually causing her to collapse to the ground. And that's where she wants to 
again came face to face with the young man that had mocked her. In a final last act of revenge, she would swipe across his face with the claw that was tipped with poison, causing him to suffer a very slow and painful death before she herself finally decided to let go. Now Vochahari was now gone. Her act of bravery and strength inspired the other villagers, and together they drove off all of the soldiers out of the village, killing many of them and sending out a message of Hisako's legend. Now once this was over, Jahari was cremated with the rest of her family, however their bones were separated and were put in clay urns. Now as one final way of saying thank you to her, they built a shrine in honour of her and her family, where they'd often burn incense and send their love and praise to the young woman who had given up her life for them. Now as the years passed by, Jahari's legend would slip into obscurity, however despite this, her spirit form did wander the mortal realm, and because her legend was lost to time, Jahari was now referred to as Hisako. Now word of her existence eventually caught the ears of the artificial intelligence Arya. Seeing an opportunity to possibly bribe the spirit, to desecrate the shrine and grave of Hisako's family, which caused Hisako to materialise as an avenging ghost, to track down and retrieve that which was stolen from her. Now she was indeed successful in doing this, but before she could return back to her astral form, she would be approached by the spirit of her father, and he would let her know that he was extremely proud of the woman she had become, and thanked her for returning the stolen items. But the fight wasn't exactly over, and he could sense a very powerful entity known as Gargos approaching the planet, so he wished her to become the gatekeeper between the spirit realm and the human realm, and thus this is the fate of his Sarko. Now this isn't exactly the end, as a majority of you Killer Instinct players will most likely be quite familiar with Shin Hisako. Now this is a somewhat what if state that could actually be written into the canon. Allow me to explain. In Hisako's normal form where her shrine has been desecrated, she strictly takes on more of a traditional Japanese style of a vengeful spirit, one that is menacing and very angry. However, when we look at Shin Hisako, there is a visual difference in terms of appearance here. After becoming a gatekeeper like her father had requested, Hisako actually goes out of her own way to retrieve her father's blade, and then finally flourish as the samurai she always had wanted to be, thus showing how different she is in her Shin form compared to a normal form. So they can be seen as somewhat two different entities, but they could simply write in the Shin Hisako form, because it does line up with her normal story very very well. Only time will tell whether or not this does come to fruition, and whether or not Hisako will return. But yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you all enjoyed this, but most importantly to everyone there that's watching this video, Happy Halloween. I hope you have all a fantastic day and take care of yourselves. Now last year I did do a bunch of horror characters, but I covered so many, but I realised if I were to do it this month, then I'd be spreading myself extremely thin in terms of material. Plus, we did have the release of Soul Calibur 6. But anyway, yes, that's kind of it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is my first time approaching the Killer Instinct series, so I'm not exactly too familiar with this, and do apologise in advance if I've missed out on some massive bits of information. If that is the case, please do let me know down in the comments below, and I will pin some stuff up to the top. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video, guys. Now, if you are interested in seeing more Killer Instinct content on this channel, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll be announcing a new series tomorrow, so please do keep an eye out for that. And I will have an update video letting you all know what exactly is going on with the channel by tomorrow. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video, guys. Now, before this video wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And also, don't forget to ring that bell, as YouTube is having a lot of problems with my videos not appearing in your sub boxes, even if you're subscribed. So if possible, guys, please do tick that bell, as it helps me out and lets you know when I make a video. But yeah, that's it for now, guys. Now, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time.